I have ranked many things in Kenshi, from weapons to bosses to towns and many other things, but today I'm going to be ranking all the skills that your characters can level up in Kenshi. I'm going to be ranking how important it is for you to level them up and how much power they have once you get them high up there. So let's just jump in and start with athletics. Athletics is one of those passive skills that you're going to be leveling up basically as you go everywhere you go everywhere you walk everywhere you run athletics is slowly gonna go up early on it is important to have at least some stats in athletics because it's gonna allow you to easily outrun enemies later on you'll probably want to fight those enemies because you'll be strong enough so early on it's a it's a bit more important but later on it kind of loses its value so we're gonna put athletics somewhere in the b tier next to the list is swimming now swimming really isn't an important skill really isn't important to have it high up there even if you have a very high swimming skill your people are not going to be able to swim really much faster especially when later on you upgrade them with prosthetics and those prosthetics usually lower the percentage of swimming skill very much so it's not really useful to have it anyway and if you want to avoid enemies by jumping into water, all you need to do is just jump into water and pretty much all human enemies won't be able to do anything towards you anymore. And the animals will basically be able to outswim you anyway. So swimming goes into F tier. Next on the list, we have dodge. Dodge is an important stat if you're going for martial arts. Otherwise, doesn't really matter doesn't really matter to have it unless you know that your characters have a good chance that their right arm is going to get hurt meaning they won't be able to use their weapons anymore meaning they'll have to use martial arts and then use dodge to avoid enemy attacks so it is useful sometimes but it's completely useless other times not that important we're gonna put it out here in the b tier as well then we go to martial arts themselves martial arts are the most overpowered attack that you can have basically they are they are stronger than all weapons when you have them very high at very high level and they can just basically destroy any enemy wherever you go so martial arts extremely overpowered to the point that it's doesn't even seem fun to use them anymore but yes they are definitely an s tier skill then we go to melee attack this basically governs how good you are with your your weapon skills how much damage you can do and when you're fighting opponents based on their melee defense and your melee attack what's your chances to actually hit them and chances for them to block so you'll be able to actually defeat enemies you know you get the idea how this works it is always important to have this higher just just always go higher until you can't go any higher so yes melee attack also very important i'm gonna put it out here in the s tier and basically we can say the same about melee defense if you want to protect yourself from enemy attacks if you see enemies with very high melee attack you know that you'll want a high melee defense at least on some characters that are gonna do more tanking but preferably on most characters because this is gonna allow you not to take as much damage as you otherwise would you know avoid it so melee defense also s tier next we go to crossbows these are amazing weapons if you're trying to cheese enemies more than just fight them straight on so basically if you're trying to maybe avoid direct confrontation maybe kite enemies that would otherwise be too more too powerful for you to actually defeat with crossbows you can destroy them the only reason why i'm not putting crossbows into s tier is because you cannot actually target and shoot anybody who is a diplomat so basically all of the high ranking members you can't actually use crossbows to hunt them down and kill them which is a bit annoying but i know why they made it and i understand that it's probably better because crossbows really are the ultimate cheese of this game so a tier next on the list we have turrets this is a very good skill for your base defense it's important to have this you know high level so you can actually hit the enemies and also not hit your own people but yeah mostly to hit the enemies and hit them while they're running and all that stuff but it's really important just for base defense you can't really use them out in the field unless you build the crossbow turrets which are the only ones that don't actually require electricity and you can build them out in the field but that also means those turrets are 
the, the worst of the turrets, so they don't actually do that much damage, and you're probably better off using crossbows, unless there's really a good position that you can use the turrets, which I have used before as well, but it's mostly for base defense, so we're gonna put them out here in the middle into B tier. Next we have the actual weapon skills, and we're gonna start with Blunt. Now early on, Blunt might seem like not very good, the weapons are very slow because they're heavy and so on, but with high level Blunt skill you'll be able to do a lot of damage, and you have to know that Blunt is actually pretty good against armor targets, which end game is full of very tough armor targets so when it comes to actual weapon skills it is important that your weapon skill of blunt is actually high so we're gonna put this one into a tier next we have hackers these are good to chop off limbs in general pretty good weapons and they do have that bonus to deal more damage against skeletons and you know if you're going into end game you might be fighting a lot of skeletons but not everybody in the end game is a skeleton, so that bonus doesn't actually benefit every target. We're gonna put him out here in the B tier. Next, we go to the heavy weapons. If you can actually get the heavy weapons high up there, it's pretty much the best of the weapons because you're gonna be just doing so much damage and if your character is strong enough to actually be able to wield a heavy weapon properly they'll be able to attack and defend in such a way that nobody's ever gonna be able to defeat them and actually level up the heavy weapons to S tier I think or high up is S tier so yes next we have katanas katanas are great for chopping things apart with tiny little slices and bleeding targets out but they are really good against unarmored weapons or lightly armored weapons which means that when you come to end game katanas are just not as good when you're dealing with lots of beefed up very heavy armored uh, opponents and they just don't go into end game that well they are extremely cool though and you know very unique in their look we're gonna put them out here in the b tier next we have pole arms these bad boys are pretty useful early on because they have usually bonus melee attack there so you'll be able to fight opponents that are higher level than you much easier also pole arms have much better reach than most of the other weapons besides maybe heavy weapons and they're not very heavy so early on very useful uh, as well they also have most of them bonuses against animals so you can deal with stuff like big things and i think that their, their general just longer reach makes them a very useful weapon later on as well so we're gonna put these bad boys in the a tier and the last of the weapon skills we have sabers i just love sabers they have some very good defensive bonuses and they are quick enough that you'll be able to block a lot of attacks so these are pretty great for anybody that you're building into a tank and i really really like them they're not that good offensively but as a defensive weapon i think they're awesome we're gonna put them out here in the a tier as well next we go to the stealth skills and first one is assassination assassination is another overpowered skill that you can use it to basically take down pretty much every enemy out there in the world with high enough stealth skill and so on. You know, you can actually assassinate them without them ever seeing you, take them down, steal their stuff, and you know, you're golden. This again is to the point, OP to the point where it's just almost not fun anymore because you can just abuse the game too much. And uh, But it's still, yes, it is a good skill to have high up and it's actually very easy to level to let's say like 60 or something and then you can use some equipment and bring it up to 100 so yes assassination very potent we'll put it up here in the a tier next stealth skill is lock picking lock picking is a very important skill throughout the whole game it's important to have it as high as possible either if you're trying to find treasures and you're lock picking into some ancient mysterious boxes or something like that and stealing stuff or maybe if you're just trying to go into someone's house and steal stuff or if you're trying to escape from a cage or if you're trying to save somebody let's say from uh, uh, slavery or maybe from a pillar machine lock picking it's always good to have we're gonna put it out here in the a tier as well next we have stealth stealth is it's pretty great because it can get you really into any place you want to go stealthily and you know unseen so it's great if you if you're early on in the game and if you don't know the world you can just abuse stealth to just explore the world without any real danger because you can just hide from everything 
but you know when you play the game more and you try to fight more enemies you realize stealth isn't that good especially because you do have to switch your gear if you're trying to go stealth so if you have any any people that have any stronger equipment anything that will protect you in combat you're gonna have to actually switch that away and go light gear so stealth it's pretty good early on and it's pretty good if you're just trying to break someone or just to maybe scout the area but otherwise b tier last among the stealthy skills we have theory theory is one another one of those that is extremely overpowered if you abuse it to the point where just the game is just not fun anymore because if you abuse it to have high level theory stat you can just steal everything in the world without ever being seen or heard and that way you can either get a ton of money but then you realize that in kenshi money doesn't matter at all it does not matter if you have a million cats or if you have a thousand cats it does not matter it matters maybe for the first like two weeks in the game where you doesn't you don't have any like your own food production or anything like that but otherwise theory later on you know doesn't give you that much unless you're role playing as the stealthy thief character which i completely understand but yeah we're gonna put it out here in the b tier next we have field medic i think field medic is very important later on in the game well actually throughout the whole game because early on your people will probably most likely get hurt quite a lot so you'll have to use the medic skill a lot and the higher it is the faster you can actually heal them the better the splint rigging is gonna be so if they're maybe limping out of a terrible situation they'll be able to limp a bit faster so having a high field medic skill is always important also later on when you have you're fighting really strong enemies and they will be hurting you a lot and you hurt you're fighting big battles and you have a lot of people to heal it's important to have it high level so you can heal them faster and fix them faster so nobody doesn't die because you just didn't get to them in time so yeah field medic s tier in my opinion and we can say the same for robotics although this is mostly for fixing skeletons and skeletons they take much much longer to die unless they're really low level skeletons and they get hit by some crazy high level attacks then you know they might actually die pretty fast but otherwise you'll be able to take your time to get to them and you know heal them later on so we're gonna put robotics into a tier instead of s tier now we get to the more base building and trade skills First, we have an engineer. This is the this is the skill that's gonna allow you to build your base. But the thing is, you can actually build whatever you're trying to build at level one. You don't have requirements. Hey, you can't build this tower until you're level 20 engineer. No, you can build everything at level one or at level zero. So it doesn't really matter how high this skill is. The only thing that you get the benefit from it is that they will build faster and you usually don't really need to build something faster. Uh, so engineer doesn't really that matter that much at its high level. We're just gonna put it out here in the C tier. Next we have science, pretty much the same thing as with engineer. You don't really need to have high level to actually do research because at level one research, you can research whatever you want. That being said, a lot of later game research takes quite a lot of hours in game. So if you have a higher level science, it is much more useful to have a higher level science and actually be able to then go through this and research faster and, you know, get to the skills that you want faster. But then again, you can also assign multiple people working on multiple workbenches and that's going to speed it up even though they all have lower skill. So once again, not as important and it's really easy to level up just basically passively researching or put them on creating uh, electronics out of copper that also raises your science skill so we're gonna put this one into c tier as well next we have armor smith this is the one that is really important if you're trying to make your own masterwork level armor because armor is not like weapons it's the same if you make it or if somebody else makes it it has the same stats it's very good if you make masterwork armor so if you're trying to equip your own army with really good gear this having one or two or a couple uh good armor smiths is gonna allow you to do that the fastest 
it's gonna be the cheapest and it's not gonna be a problem because you, you would have to go around and break into ancient places to actually be able to get some good armor so you know for armoring your own army this is the best skill we're gonna put it out here in the s tier it's important that you get it as high as possible so you can guarantee those masterworks or at least have a very good chance to proc a masterwork when you're making a specialist level one next we have weaponsmith this one is important if you're trying to improve your army with better weapons and you don't really have good weapons because with weaponsmith high level one you can actually make up to edge type two weapons those are procs you can make edge type ones and then they can sometimes proc into edge type two so those are good but you have to remember when you make your own weapons they're never as good as those that npcs use or the ones that you can find out there in the world or the ones that you can buy your edge type two is worse than the edge type 2 weapons you can find in the world so you'll never be able to make the best weapons using your own weaponsmith but it is very useful to have these until you find those very best weapons and maybe you gather all the matews that you can find out there so weaponsmith we're gonna put it out here in the a tier then we have the crossbow smith crossbows actually making your own crossbows is a very complicated thing it's way more complicated than actually making weapons because you need more uh different parts and such and it's usually it's not as important because actually finding masterwork crossbows and buying them it's much easier than for weapons you know so it's usually very easy to get some good crossbows without actually be able to or having to make your own ones so crossbow spinning i don't think is as important as the other two armor spinning or weapon spinning so we're gonna put them out here in the c tier it is good for making your own uh ammo though that is very good for next we have laboring this is gonna just passively level up as your people are working on i don't know mining or anything like that it doesn't really matter if it's high level or not all it's gonna do is gonna speed up the process which sure can be good but you know later on you can automate most of the laboring tasks so you don't actually need people anymore so it's not that useful of a skill so we're gonna put it out here in the c tier as well next we have farming farming you can't really automate so you always need people doing the farming and farming is actually pretty good to have a higher level skill because there's a chance to fail when you're gathering uh let's say food and if you fail you don't get anything out of the farm right but with the higher level skills you actually won't be failing anymore your people won't be failing and failing anymore so i think out of all those base building skills farming having it higher level it's actually the one that is probably the most important out of them so we're gonna put this out here in the b tier last but not the least we have cooking now unless you have a huge giant army you probably won't need more than one or two cooks and once again the higher the, their level of cooking they're just gonna speed up the process of making stuff they're not gonna be able to make more stuff out of less materials or anything like that it just speeds up the process so once again not that important to have a very high skill because usually maybe you're gonna start building a base start cooking when you have a couple of people and as you gather more people and you need more mouths to feed your cook is also naturally just be leveling up because he's been cooking for a while and they'll have high enough skill to now feed your higher population or you maybe assign another cook or something like that but it doesn't really matter so we're gonna put it out here in the c tier as well and there we have it there are the skills ranked i am very uh interested to hear what you guys think what would you personally put in the s tier what would you put in the f tier and what do you completely disagree with what i said over here for now thank you for watching i'll see you next time